Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we are solving leak code problem 560 subarray sum equals k. Given an array of integers, nums, and an integer k, return the total number of subarrays whose sum equals to k. A subarray is a contiguous non-empty sequence of elements within an array. Let's look at an example. If we have this subarray or this array 1111 and k equals 2, how many ways can we form a subarray that sums to 2? Well, we could take the first two ones and use that, and we could use the last two ones. So the answer is 2. For the second example, where we have 1, 2, 3, and k equals 3, then we can also form 2. Let's see how we can do that. Obviously, if we take 1 and 2 and add them together, that is a subarray. And if we take 3 on its own, that is also a subarray, and it also equals 2k. So the answer is 2 again. Unfortunately, uh, if you look at the examples, they're really easy, but they don't actually paint a good picture of how to solve this question. This one is one where it's extremely easy to code up, especially if you've seen the question before, because you can just easily do it from memory. The hardest part about this question is actually explaining uh, the solution and why it works. It is a bit confusing. Admittedly, I've had to record this video multiple times because I keep messing up the explanation. Uh, I know how it works in my head, but explaining it is very annoying. So I'm going to do my best to demystify it. So what I want to do is I just want to clear all of this away. And let's now um, just think of an example to illustrate this problem. These are the basic examples, but like I said, it doesn't really paint a good picture of how to solve this question. Now, all of these subarray sum equals k or divisible by k or multiple of k or something to do with a subarray sum equaling to k, they all follow the same pattern. And that is they are solved using a prefix sum. And if you don't know what a prefix sum is, it's basically the sum of each of the elements as you're going along. So the prefix sum for one, two, three would be one, and then you add the two, so it's three, and then you add this uh, three and now it's six. So the prefix sum is one, three, six. And what I want you to do is think about something. So if we have a prefix sum and we have two numbers and they're actually the same number, what does this tell us, right? If we then had a prefix sum of, okay, let's say the next number in this was minus six, what would the prefix sum be here? Sorry, minus three minus three, right? Let's just say there was an extra element here, minus three. What would the prefix sum be? Well, it would be three. Now, if you ever get a prefix sum and you have two numbers that are the same, what this means is that the values in between here and here, they sum to zero because they've canceled each other out, right? We went up three and then down three, which means that we canceled each other out. So we have something like, the sum of you know index i in our prefix sum, if it minus the sum of index j equals to zero, then we know that these two numbers, um, you know, obviously they're the same in this case, but we know that the sum between them is actually zero. And we can also extrapolate this, um, where if the sum of i uh, minus k equals to the sum of j, then we know that the distance between sum of i and sum of j is actually k, which is what we're looking for, right? Subarray sums that actually sum to k. So what we can do is we're going to store a map of all of our prefix sums, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to basically count how many times they occur. And if we ever get a prefix sum that we've seen before, that means that we know that the distance between them is, well, in this case, it's zero, but we're actually going to store the prefix sum, prefix sum minus k as the key, and then how many times we've seen it, right? So in this case, let's just say we've seen it once. And every time we see that prefix sum that we currently have minus k, every time we see it, we're going to basically add that many subarrays to our solution, right? Because the the value in our map is actually going to represent how many times we've seen prefix sum minus k. Because remember that if sum of i minus k equals sum of j, that means that the elements between sum of i and sum of j uh, is k, right? So for example, if k equals to 3, let's see if I can do a good example here. So if the prefix sum, uh, we want something like 1, 
three, maybe it's nine, and then back to three. So what elements would give us that? So this, this is the prefix sum, prefix. So the original array would have to be something like uh, one, two, seven, and then we want to dump six. So this would be minus six, right? So basically here, um, oh, sorry, if we want, oh shoot, that's not, okay, this should be, sick. ah, okay, let's go back. Let's just say this is, oh, well, I have to go back quite a far, six, right? So that means this would be one, two, uh, seven, and then we want to dump three, so this is minus three. So because we were looking for k equals three, the dif difference between here is three, which means that the, the elements between these two have to add up to what we're looking for. So that is how we're going to solve it. Again, this is one of those where you really just have to kind of draw it out on paper as you go along. And admittedly, these examples are really bad because they're just way too simple and they don't really illustrate this well. You almost need to come up with your own kind of test case um, to prove that this is true. But essentially, it relies on the logic, right? If if the distance between, if sum of i and sum of j in a prefix sum is zero, or sorry, the, the difference between them is zero, then we know that obviously the elements between them um, are zero, right? They sum to zero. Uh, therefore, you know, we don't actually need to, it's zero, right? So if we apply the same logic, but for k, then we know that the difference between them is k, which is what we're looking for. So hopefully I haven't confused you. Again, this is one problem where it's, it's really easy to code, but hard to explain. So hopefully when we go to the code editor, um, things will be a little bit clearer. And um, you can basically see how this is going to work in code. But essentially what we're looking for is to store these prefix sums, whatever it is at the current iteration, minus K. If we've seen that before, then we know that whatever happened between the last time we saw it, and now it has to sum to K. Um, and yeah. There we go. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, hopefully I haven't confused you, but if you're just looking for the solution, we're going to code that up now. So let's go to the code editor. Okay. We struggled through the explanation because this problem is very annoying. Hopefully now looking at the code, we can clear some things up. It's definitely one of those questions where you need to see the code. Sometimes you just need to work through it literally step by step. Uh, and maybe we can do that at the end to kind of make it more clear. So the first thing we want to do is actually make sure we have nums to process. If nums is an empty list, then we can't find any subarrays. So we just return zero. So we're going to say, if not nums, um, we want to return zero. Now, remember that we're going to be storing a map, which takes um, the prefix, prefix sum minus K, and we're going to be mapping it to how many times we've seen that. So we need to define that dictionary. So we're going to say the prefix uh, dict is going to equal to collections .default dict int. This is just some syntactic sugar to prevent me from actually having to uh, check whether the key is in there. And it will set the key to just be zero uh, on the first insertion. Now, here's one line with without which this problem will not actually work. And we'll explain why you need it in a second. But it is that prefix dict of zero um, equals to one. So this is for the case where we have um, obviously prefix, if the prefix sum minus k equals to zero, that can be a case and we actually need to count this. But I'm not going to try to explain it yet because it's just going to confuse you. I'm just going to confuse myself. I already had to re-record this part because I confused myself. This problem is fucking horrible. Um, okay. Let's just continue and we'll explain it when we get there. So we have our prefix sum and this is obviously going to be zero and our result is also going to be zero because we haven't seen any subarrays yet. Now what we want to do is we want to say for num in nums, we need to basically add our num to the prefix sum. So prefix sum plus equals to num. Now, remember, we want to check whether or not we've seen our prefix num minus k before, because if we have, then that means that whatever our current prefix sum is, if we've seen prefix sum minus k, then obviously the difference between them is k, because we had prefix sum 
minus k and now we're at a value of prefix sum so obviously we just added k to get to prefix sum which is what we're looking for how many subarrays did it take to get from prefix sum to the current prefix sum if the difference is k right because that means that the difference between them had to sum to k which is what we're looking for in and of itself so we're going to say if prefix sum minus k is actually in our prefix dictionary then we found a solution right we've seen um, something prior such that so for example if we if k is like 12 and we've seen a sum of i don't know 14 and now we're at 26 we know that between these two times we've seen elements which sum up to 12 so that means that you know we found a subarray here so if that prefix sum minus k is in there then we want to say res plus equals to how many times have we seen this before because it could happen that we have something like 0 and then we go to 12 and then we go to 18 um, and then we go to 24 right so from 0 to 12 is 12 so that's one subarray and then from 12 to 24 is another one and maybe we go back down to uh, 12 and then 0 right so we can count those multiple times so res uh, plus equals to basically the prefix so how many times have we seen prefix um, sum minus k and then obviously we've now seen a prefix sum so we need to increment how many times we've seen it before so we're going to say uh sorry prefix dict of our prefix sum is going to be plus equals to one because obviously we've now seen that prefix sum we need to mark that we've seen it and also how many times we've seen it in case we've already seen it okay so the last thing we need to do is simply return result and this will basically solve the question let me just double check i didn't make any stupid mistakes and submit it and after i submit it just to prove that it works we'll actually take a step back and okay cool it, it, it's accepted let's explain this line here uh, which is kind of the tricky part before we talk about the time and space complexity i just want to explain this line so this is actually very important and it won't run without it let's just remove it and see what test cases actually trip up and we can explain why this happens so let's submit this and we can actually see one 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 and k equals two so the reason for this is and let's kind of go through what our prefix sum would be and we can kind of walk through this so obviously in the beginning we have nothing in our dictionary and the prefix sum is zero so we get to the first number and it equals to one and then we get to the second number so our prefix sum is now two and obviously prefix sum minus k um, is not in our dictionary right so we would not actually increment our solution but wait a minute this is actually an answer right because this equals to two but we only increment if prefix sum minus k is in there so what's the deal right because we would put it in afterwards but we actually wouldn't count this solution which is why it's only counting as one the next time we would because we've we're going to put that prefix sum in later but the first one doesn't get counted so in the cases that your prefix sum actually sums to k if you don't have that line um where prefix dict of zero equals one the first time you get a sum that actually sums to exactly k you won't count anything because you will not have pre-populated that dictionary so this line is just for the very first time that you actually see um a count that equals to k without it you will miss you'll be off by one and your solution won't be accepted so that's the reason why we have to initialize it it's because the first time we see prefix sum uh equaling to k then this is actually a special case and we need to handle this so that's why we initialize it to one so we can count it the first time we see it after that it'll be just fine um, but we need this to run as you can see so that is kind of why we have this one and i guess it was good to go through this example uh to show you exactly why anyway um what is the time complexity of this algorithm it is well big o of n because we just process every uh element once 
and that's about it. We do a dictionary lookup, but that's a constant space, uh, constant time thing. So it's just big O of n, uh, where n is the number of nums in nums. Uh, for the space complexity, obviously we need to maintain this dictionary. In the worst case, nums will all be, uh, the prefixes will all be uh, unique. So it's also just gonna be big O of n. Um, obviously n depends on how many numbers there are in there. So that is your time and space complexity. Um, again, look at this question, like the code is so simple, but explaining it is very, very difficult. I think that the crux of this problem really comes from understanding that if you've seen two prefix sums, um, then the difference between them is zero. But if you've seen a prefix sum and then a prefix sum plus k, then obviously the sum between them must be k. Um, so that is why we're looking for, have we seen something minus k? Because obviously if everything up to that point was k, um, it was prefix sum and then the next point is prefix sum plus k, then whatever happened between those two points equals to k. So hopefully I've hammered that in well enough. This is just one where it needs to click for you and it makes sense for you. It's just, as you can see, I've done this problem so many times and it's, it's just very difficult to explain, but hopefully that helps you. I'm going to stop blabbing because I've probably confused you and pissed you off at this point. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to the channel, really helps me grow. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.